Hello, and welcome to the Capital Wasteland, more specifically, to Evergreen Mills. Throughout this dying factory are a number of small details that we can discover, and now that I have, I present to you 5 secrets you may have missed in Fallout 3's Evergreen Mills. Starting us off, we have the trio of involuntary workers locked inside the fencing. After fighting our way through the numerous raiders, we can interact with them. They don't have much to say, and the things they do seem to contradict one another. Please, help us. There's no point. If you do unlock the gate and set them free, they will take off, collecting weapons as they go, making it seem like they're getting ready to fight their way to freedom, but then they just walk around or cower. If approached, they'll say, Where could we go even if we did escape? we just die in the wasteland. There's only one thing that can take care of an attitude like that. Inside the large factory, we can find an entertainment section. Giant dice hang from the ceiling, an abundance of alcohol and two stripper poles can also be found. The poles are surrounded by a selection of children's toys and bottle caps. Further on and past the bright-breasted mannequins are a small group of raiders. One raider in particular can be found carrying a key belonging to someone called Madam. Without digging into the game's files, we would be left wondering who this Madam is, and where she can be found. It turns out that the raider we got the key from is Madam. For some reason, she had her unique name taken away and appears as just a standard raider. The key opens the cash register, locked safe, and cell, so it's clear to see that this Madam raider was the one running the place. Off to the side, we can find a lone raider locked behind bars and surrounded by more children's toys. This is most likely one of the strippers being forced to work. Not sure why she's labelled as a raider though. We can either pick the lock or use Madam's key to set her free, but hostility is all we get for letting her out. According to the Fallout wiki, the raider sitting at the southernmost campfire can be heard whistling, humming, yawning, and belching. In order to witness these, the raider must be friendly and idle. In other words, you have to enslave him with the Mesmetron, and then remove the bomb collar. I tried this three times, with the first two attempts crashing the game. Money! I'm a slave! Where's this Paradise Falls? This collar will explode, won't it? I've heard about these things. I don't want to be a slave! I was just confused before! Take it off! Well, to hell with it! Go ahead and try! I'm alive! You did it! Nothing personal, but I'm a person! I'm going, I'm going! Don't hurt me! Please! You gotta let me go! I hope you know what you're doing. I'm alive! You did it! This was due to the AI detection being turned off when removing the collar. Once that was taken care of, I sat down with my new friend and waited to see if the rumours were true. And to my surprise, some of them were. After 10 minutes of waiting, I managed to witness the raider both yawn and whistle. As for the belching and humming, not so much. Maybe you need to wait around for a longer duration, but 10 minutes of sitting in front of the fire was all I could take. The raiders of Evergreen Mills appear to be completely unique, as the other raiders throughout the waste don't seem to do this. By climbing the rocks behind Evergreen Mills, we can make our way up to the water tower behind the factory. Here we can read the word McLean printed across the tower. This is a reference to the real world town in Northern Virginia, which is home to many congressmen and high-ranking government officials. This is likely due to its location and the short distance to Washington DC and the Central Intelligence Agency. And lastly, deep in the bowels of the factory, we can encounter the friendly raider Smiling Jack. This trader is a very clear reference to Smiling Jack from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This game was developed by former Fallout developers Tim Kane and Jason Anderson. The Smiling Jack from Vampire warns the player to watch out for shotguns, as they are more volatile when compared to most other weapons. 
Smiling Jack of Evergreen Mills carries a shotgun. But not just any shotgun, a unique variant called the Terrible Shotgun, which deals significantly more damage to all types of enemies, not just vampires. Talking about you, Vance. And there we have it, five things you may have missed in Evergreen Mills. Before you go, I would like to remind you of five things you could do to support the channel. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and enable notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.